Did a little chest and tricep workout today. Actually, I guess uh, you should call it tricep and chest. Um, the goal here is to completely fatigue the triceps and do all the isolation, uh, do most of the isolation work actually, um, before doing any compound movements with the chest for presses. So basically I want the, the triceps to be completely annihilated and the chest to be uh, fatigued before we head into um, the pressing compound movements. Uh, I started with some overhead tricep extensions and then I go right into a, a rope press down. You can't really tell it the way the video's um, edited, but I try not to stop on those. So I go right from the overhead and turn right around into the press down using the same weight. Um, today I try to keep everything around a 12 to 15 rep range. Uh, again, I'm, I'm not really focusing on uh, sets and weight and rep schemes or anything, just uh, trying to share some uh, variations of different movements and things that I do. Um, here I go into a, a two-hand um, overhead tricep extension on the flat bench, also known as a French press or dumbbell skull crushers as I like to call them. They just, that just sounds more bad, but, but anyways, um, so I go from the two-hand overhead to, uh, you'll see, I switch into a single hand um, over the chest extension. Joey Lawless taught me these years ago, and um, I really enjoy adding those into my tricep. I, I don't do a lot of kickbacks anymore, um, just with my shoulders and everything. I do utilize kickbacks some, um, but I like these uh, much better. They are a hard um, movement to teach someone as far as the stabilization of the shoulder and everything, but once you find your alignment and your groove, um, you can really isolate the triceps on these. I also did some uh, single hand overhead uh, tricep extensions with a big full extension down behind on um, the back of my head um, as far as I can extend to the bottom of the full squeeze at the top but for some reason um, that video segment didn't make the cut I don't know what happened to it but anyways those are really good to add into um, again my goal here is to annihilate the triceps so um, I throw a few of these movements together uh, for multiple sets, again, trying to keep my rep range high in a 12 to 15 rep range, trying to focus on the isolation and the squeezing of these movements. Um, and then I go into a single hand uh, cross body tricep press down. I utilize an underhand grip on these. Um, you can do overhand. Uh, it's just a preference type thing. I feel like I get a better contraction at the bottom with an underhand grip. Um, some people don't like the way uh, that feels on the wrist. To me, it's more natural this way. Um, it's just, you know, whatever works for you. The main thing is focus on squeezing that tricep at the bottom. Again, trying to annihilate those triceps. I want them to be completely gone before um, I start on my chest work. So, hitting both sides of those, going from side to side, trying to keep everything tight throughout the movement and a big squeeze to the triceps at the bottom. Um, once the triceps are fatigued and you move into your chest work, if you had never done this, it's going to feel really funny. To start with because uh, basically your triceps feel like uh, well done spaghetti noodles they'll stick to the wall if you take them off and throw them up against it but um, it's a really good principle uh, for the pre-exhaustion work and then I go right into some isolation stuff from my chest with a little cable crossover movement here I'm really focused on trying to squeeze the middle of my chest um, Robbie Wilson told me back in the late 80s when you're doing this type of movement, if you focus on holding a pencil um, between your pecs, like running with the point pointing down towards your navel, navel and uh, the eraser pointing towards your chin, holding that pencil between your pecs, pecs long ways and squeezing that the whole time and don't let that pencil hit the floor, you really get that peak contraction in the middle there. And then I do a little uh, variation of incline chest flies here uh, with my palms facing out uh, what I try to do is imagine I'm wrapping um, some kind of string around a barrel that's laying on my chest I try to uh, maintain a 90 degree bend with my elbows um, focusing again on squeezing from the outer pecs into the middle of my chest and the pictorial tie-ins and um, creating a big squeeze at the top there these are really slow and isolated contractions and then I can move right into like a pumping type movement. Here's my hot wife. She popped in the video. 
Uh, and then I move into a pumping type movement. Again, trying to maintain that flexing uh, in my chest throughout the whole um, series. And I tell you, by the time you finish this, you've done 24 to 30 reps without um, taking a break. It's pretty tough. This is a lot harder than it works. Um, this video doesn't show it well, but I'm on a stability ball here holding a bridge. My hips are completely off the ball, just my shoulders on the ball. And the object here is to imagine that my forearms and fists are inside cylinders and I'm trying to act as if they're pistons. Um, as one's firing up, the other one's coming down, trying to maintain stability on the ball, keeping my core tight, um, everything flexed throughout the movement, not allowing the ball to shift or roll under me or bounce at all. And I try to get 12 to 15 reps with each arm through this. And I go right into a double press with a little bit more of a pumping type movement. But again, not allowing the ball to bounce. So I'm trying to maintain that stability um, without allowing any bouncing from my body through the ball to give any um, assistance to the movement. So focusing on the isolation and the squeeze and keeping the chest, abs, core, everything tight throughout the movement. Uh, once you finish uh, this movement, then... You know, you're looking at about 45 reps in, so uh, can also get that heart rate up really good for you. Then I go into some incline presses here, really trying to focus on the upper chest. Um, again, my triceps are toast here, so I don't have any aid coming from them whatsoever. This is all on my chest, and I'm trying to maintain um, that inner uh, pectoral flex throughout the movement, keeping that number two pencil between my pecs and not allowing it to move. Um, so then I uh, go to a standing um, chest pushes on a functional trainer. Again, trying to maintain the same stability as I was doing on the ball in a vertical position here, keeping those abs tight, trying to push from uh, more of my serratus muscles, uh, which are located beneath, kind of like under your armpit and under your chest there. Um, squeezing those throughout the movement and maintaining a flex in that area as I keep those arms in pistons and keep those uh, pushing through the cylinders there without any bouncing or um, cheating from the movement. Once I do 12 to 15 reps with each, arms, each arm here, I'll move more into like a double pushing movement. Um, I do get a little bounce here, really trying to focus on flexing that chest. Again, I have no triceps, they're gone. Um, so keeping that uh, chest tight, I'm trying to keep the abs tight, my quads and hamstrings, everything's flexed here, um, full contraction throughout the movement. And then the last thing I do um, is what I call serratus squeezes. So I take a, a plate overhead, um, I engage the serratus muscle and just squeeze that muscle, moving the plate up. And I try to keep my shoulders and the rest of my chest and my lats and everything else out of this, really trying to focus on isolating um, the serratus um, to get those developed. Uh, they're the most uh, proud moment I had was when I saw those back in uh, 2009 and going into 2010. Uh, so they'll be back. 